Hello everyone and welcome to the first of the 2024 Mega Drive game dev tutorials. Over the past few months I've had quite a lot of requests both on Patreon and other places too to do some tutorials on the Shadow and Highlight mode. I think to many people the Shadow and Highlight mode is a bit of a mysterious and esoteric part of the hardware. Actually in terms of the coding it's not very difficult, the difficulty comes in knowing what the rules for the Shadow and Highlight mode are and how to utilise them to create a nice effect. So the first few lessons of this year we'll be dealing with how to use various ways to create transparencies on the system and after that we'll be delving into music and sound effects because if you've been keeping up to date with SGDK you'll know that recently there was released the version 2.0 According to my experience, upgrading to 2.0 won't cause any issue with your previous code, assuming that you've been keeping up with SGDK up to now. The main difference is the addition of a brand new sound driver. I've been aware that this XGM2 sound driver has been in development for quite a while and that's the reason why I kept putting off doing a tutorial on music or sound effects. However, now that the new sound driver is here, I can finally go ahead and do those tutorials and I won't just be covering the brand new sound driver, but also the previous, the older one too, because each one has its own particular strings and which one you decide to use will depend on your own particular needs. Another popular tutorial request has been to do a few lessons on how to transition screens, for example, how to go from a title screen to the menu screen to the first level, second level, uh, boss battle and so on. That is a topic that can get very complex very quickly because you, once you're dealing with going from screen to screen of course you have to start to learn how to load in different enemies and how to handle the RAM and how to clear out the VRAM and reload different levels and how to organise your data and once you start to get to that point you also want to start splitting your project into different files and so on. Just as when we did the collision, the level collision code last year, it's something that you really have to build up to over a, very, over a number of lessons and lay a good foundation. So I think this will be a topic that I'll cover in 2025. And given the complexity of the issue, it's probably something that will take up all of the tutorials of 2025. So we'll cover things like how to split up your project into different files and have things organized, how to create certain data types for the enemies and different types of objects in your game, and also how to load them in now do some basic enemy AI and of course how to manage the screen so you load from one level to the next. Speaking of level collision we ended last year's tutorials without covering one particular aspect of the level collision that is the slopes and stairs. If you watch my latest Castlevania Symphony of the Night developers diary you'll know that I managed to fix a little bug I had with the uh, the Christmas demo slope and collision code and that was when the when you land on certain parts of the stairs or slopes it would result in a very jerky camera like a snapping. I still want to make a few more changes but at this point I think the code is pretty robust, it's working quite well and if people are interested and if I think the code's mature enough then maybe I can do a lesson at the very end of 2024 covering slopes and stairs. Okay with all that said and done let's now get into the lesson at hand. Before continuing with this video I would definitely recommend that everyone first goes and takes a look back at a developer's diary I did a while back on the shadow and highlights mode. In that video I went into a lot of detail about how the shadow and highlight mode works so uh, watching that will save me having to repeat myself here. At the time I was still relatively new to making Mega Drive games so I think I was very excited to use this fabled um, shadow and highlight mode to do these transparencies on the console. It is a very cool technique after all and I hope everyone has as much fun learning it today as I did back then. Okay let's begin by looking at the code that we're going to be starting with and this is the resources.res with one background and two sprites already loaded onto the ROM. As usual check the video description for a download link for these graphical assets. I've already written the code just to put those sprites and backgrounds on the screen and also to handle the input, the controls of the two sprites too. If you're a Patreon supporter then I'll, in, over on Patreon there'll be a link where you can download the actual um, tutorial file and you can just carry on from here and there'll be the completed file as well. Everyone else you can either use your own project or just copy it out as is written here. You can see that I've set up the controls so you can control both the sprites, the direction using a single control pad. Those with a free button controller can just substitute the Y for the start button. Let's now take a closer look at those two sprites because the way the palettes are set up are going to be very important for the shadow and highlight mode. You can see that I've drawn the sprite to look like a palette and the first colour of which is this blue colour but of course being the very first colour in the palette this will just be ignored. It's going to be the fully transparent background colour of the sprite. I've just drawn a black background around it just so it's more clear when it turns up on the screen. The next 13 colours are just normal colours and they work just as they would in any other non-shadow and highlights palette. 
is with the final two colours, this yellow and this grey, where things get a bit different. You may recall from watching that video, the developers die on the shadow and highlight mode, that the final two colours, they dictate which is going to be a shadow and which is going to be a highlight. Now the 15th colour of the palette is the highlight and the 16th colour is the shadow. So you can see here in this other sprite, this spectre sprite, where I filled in these greens just as placeholders just to take up the indexes so that the white here can be the highlight and the black can be the shadow. And these can be any colour you want, these last two. It's just what matters is their position in the palette. So in this case we've got the yellow being the highlight and the grey being the dark shadow. If we open up our current ROM in the emulator then we get this result. Now for this particular lesson I'll definitely for shadow and highlight I'll definitely recommend that you avoid using gens because the way the that handles shadow and highlight is very inaccurate to real hardware. Here I'm using Kega Fusion and that seems to be okay but I recommend definitely trying out these samples on real hardware just to be sure. As you can see the result is pretty ordinary. These sprites in the background both look normal because we haven't enabled shadow and highlight mode yet so let's do that next. Thankfully this is very straightforward. It can be done in just a single line of code. Within your main bracket but before the while loop simply put in this line of code do VDP set highlight shadow. If within the brackets you set this to true then it will enable shadow and highlights mode and of course if you put force then it will turn it off. Of course shadow and highlight mode is turned off by default anyway but you might want to turn it on off during the game as I did in Castlevania so that's an option for you there. If we now save and compile and open up the emulator again we will see we get a very different result from last time. Of course the left hand side of the screen is with shadow and highlight enabled and the right hand side was with it disabled. And if you look closely at the left hand side of the screen as I move this palette sprite around you can see that the final two colours of that palette are displaying both displaying both highlight and shadow effects although because the background's so dark anyway the shadow effect is very hard to see. At the moment the ghost is just darkened and it's not showing any kind of shadow and highlight effect but I'll explain why that's the case in a moment. However before I do that I just want to tell a funny story about shadow and highlight mode and how you have to be careful not to use it incorrectly. So what you're seeing here is footage from the Mega CD version of The Secrets of Monkey Island which is one of my favourite games ever. In this game you play Guybrush Freebwood, a mighty pirate, and in this particular scene you're supposed to be on a deserted island in the Caribbean in the middle of the day. Being in the middle of the day you expect the scene to be very bright, but you can see here the colours are very dark. Now the apparent reason for this is that the developers somehow accidentally enabled shadow and highlight mode without realising it. And if you look at the um, hacked version by Master Lin Kuei on the right hand side, you can see how much more brighter and vibrant it is. It's really strange how no one noticed it when they were making the game, but maybe it was something that was changed accidentally at the last minute and it just went out to be, the CDs went out to be pressed without anyone noticing. But it's a very strange story, so be careful not to make the same mistake. If you would like to use shadow and highlight mode while keeping everything in this original colour then you simply have to change everything to high priority. So remember the priority level determine whether you know the which backgrounds are which sprite and peered in front of the other. So we can simply go to tile at tree 4 within the um, draw background image function or with tile at tree within the add sprite function and then we can simply make the priority true. Now if we simply save and compile again you will see that now we've got a bright screen again. Now that everything is in its normal colour you can see the shadow part of the shadow and highlight part of the little palette sprite here much more clearly. The reason why it's only the palette sprite which is showing the shadow and highlight effect and the ghost sprite isn't is because the palette sprite is using PAL3 which is the fourth palette and the fourth palette is, is the only palette that the shadow and highlight effect works on. If you look back at our code we can see that the background is using PAL0 which is of course the first palette. PAL1 isn't being used at all, PAL2 is being used by the ghost sprite and PAL3 finally is being used by the little pallet sprite. Now if we simply swap it around so that the ghost is using PAL3 and the pallet sprite is using PAL2 then we'll see that the pallet sprite loses its shadow and highlight effects whereas the ghost sprite gains them. Of course more than one sprite can use shadow and highlight but you have to make sure that both sprites are using the um, PAL3 and that the colours of course match the design. After compiling again you can see that this time the uh, palette sprite is using normal colours. You can see the yellow and grey at the very end there. Whereas the, now the ghost sprite is using the shadow and highlight effect. So the white areas have been replaced by this um, highlight. And then the darker areas which are quite difficult to see here have been replaced by the shadow. Now one of the um, 
limitations of sprout based shadow and highlight effect is the fact that if you lay over one sprout on top of the other the one on top will completely delete the sprout behind it so you can't use you can't highlight sprouts which appear behind another sprout or shadow them so you really have to decide which sprout you want to appear in front of the other and what determines which sprout appears in front of the other is determined by which order they were added to the program so you can see here if we swap around the um, test palette and do that first above the um, the spectre sprite the ghost sprite then now the palette sprite appears in front of the ghost sprite instead of course there are ways within SGDK to change the order of the sprites and for something like a beat em up game like Streets of Rage obviously the order of the sprites are, are changing depending on how high up the screen each enemy is and each player is but that's another topic entirely so I'll save that for a future lesson Okay, so just to recap, if you want to use sprite based shadow and highlight mode, the first step is simply to use that single line of code to turn on shadow and highlight. Once that has been done, any asset, whether it be a background or a sprite that you want to have its original color, you need to set it to high priority. If you set it to low priority, then it will be a darker color instead. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the high and low priority is not just being used for shadow and highlight mode, but it's also being used to determine which asset appears in front of which. So you have to be very careful when using that. And this is one of the complications that you get when using shadow and highlight mode, because you essentially have this little um, flag, this um, high and low priority, which is doing two jobs at the same time. And this creates some complications when using shadow and highlight mode, but we'll go through those in a future tutorial lesson. And finally, once you have taken the first two steps of enabling shadow and highlight mode and deciding which priority each asset needs to be, the final thing to take into consideration is the palette. So remember, any sprite that once you need to use for shadow and highlight mode needs to be assigned the fourth palette, i.e. PAL3. And within PAL3 is the final two colors in the palette 15 and 16 which are highlight and shadow respectively. I hope everybody has fun experimenting with this because experimentation is really the way to really learn it and know how to use it. Okay so that's it for this tutorial thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things for example the code for each lesson then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.